A cleanup is underway in the United Arab Emirates after the desert nation was hit by its heaviest rainfall in 75 years. Thunderstorms unleash massive flooding in Dubai, dumping more than a year and a half's worth of rain in just a few hours. At least one person has died. Although heavy rains have eased, disruptions continue as streets remain flooded. Power outages have also been reported around the city. The Dubai International Airport remains in chaos with hundreds of flights either cancelled, delayed or diverted. Schools will remain closed until next week, underscoring the difficulty of the cleanup. You can see it's affect the people, especially the traffic system of the UAE. Mostly people, you know, they lost car, you know, they lost their transport services. And we are facing uh, little difficulties. I'm flying from Paris. Uh, Dubai is our layover where we were supposed to connect to another flight, which was, which was supposed to take us to Kolkata, India. There are hundreds and thousands of other passengers just like me in this airport who have been waiting for 10 hours, 16 hours, some even for 24 to 30 hours. Well, questions were raised about whether cloud seeding could have caused the heavy rains. The UAE has been leading the effort in which chemicals are implanted into clouds to increase rainfall in an environment where water scarcity is a concern. But the UAE's meteorologist Meteorology Agency says there were no such operations before the storm. يعني لو كان في استمطار ممكن اقول لك ان الاستمطار لا علاقه او شيء يعني لو كان في مسويين احنا استمطار في هالحاله كنت بقول لك لان الاستمطار اكيد بيزيد كميه ال ال الامطار اللي التراكميه اللي توصل على الارض بس لان هالحدث لم يتم عمل اي عمليات استمطار فيه فكانت كلها طبيعيه ومثل ما ذكرت سابقا خلال هذا الشهر ابريل هالنوع من الحالات عادي متطرفه ان هي تستوي لان شهر في الفترات الانتقاليه من فصل الى فصل. Experts say the huge rainfall was instead likely exacerbated by climate change. Other states in the Gulf region also hit by torrential rain and floods. At least 19 people have been killed in neighboring Oman after three consecutive days of heavy rain. We're joined by Rosalind Princely, Associate Professor and Head Disaster Solutions at the ANU Institute for Climate, Energy and Disaster Solutions at the Australian National University. Uh, Professor, thank you very much, first of all, for joining us. I want to ask you about this event. It's called a rare rainfall event, with reports talking about what over 250 millimetres of rain recorded in less than 24 hours in some places. Can you put that in context for us? How much of a deviation is this from daily averages for that part of the world? Well, I don't know about daily averages, but it's certainly about double the normal annual rainfall that you would get in this part of the world. Um, so it's a massive um, diversion from what we'd expect um, having said this, um, in this region, there do tend to be um, intermittent heavy rainfall accompanied by long dry periods. It's just that this particular rainfall was much heavier than the normal heavy rainfall. So, Professor, I mean, different theories and speculations as to what could have caused this much rain in a desert city. How much of this is due to climate change or cloud seeding? So... Like, you probably know that the World Meteorological Organization has shown that in the last 50 years there's been an, um, an increase in the number of floods by about a factor of five, and this has been driven by climate change and more extreme weather. And so climate change is causing a much warmer atmosphere. Um, so because the atmosphere is warming, it can hold more moisture, approximately 7% more for every degree of warming. But what we're seeing is greater flooding than what we'd expect from that, so more intense rainfall. And that's because the extra heat in the atmosphere means there's more energy for weather systems to generate that intense rainfall. And that more moisture and energy in the atmosphere means we get more of our rainfall in the form of short, intense downpours. And we're expecting to get a lot more short, intense downpours as opposed to gentle, um, more constant rain as we've experienced in the past across the world. And this is increasing the risk of flash flooding everywhere. So um, there have been some people that think that um, it's cloud seeding. Um, I saw the person um, earlier from um, Dubai saying that they weren't 
cloud seeding at that time anyway. Um, it's very unlikely that cloud seeding would cause such a flood. Generally, it increases the rainfall by about 15%. And they really only cloud seed when they want to encourage rain to fall from very recalcitrant clouds that aren't going to rain anyway, not from ones that are full of rain causing huge storms. And the planes that seed the clouds aren't even allowed to fly into these kind of thunderstorms for safety reasons. Okay. Um, it seems that um, a lot of people on social media jumped on social media and said, um, this is due to recent cloud seeding operations. Um, but what we see all over the world at the moment is there's a lot of misinformation and conspiracy theories and we shouldn't believe them. So I just want to clarify, Professor, cloud seeding has never led to too much rain ever before? Not that I know of, not that's ever been proven. Um, there's been a lot of, as I say, conspiracy theories that it might, but actually cloud seeding is a tool that we really need with um, this um, with the weather changes due, caused by climate change. So, for instance, um, we at ANU are doing research looking at how we can use cloud seeding to reduce the intensity of cyclones. Um, there's a lot of people, a lot of countries around the world are using cloud seeding to reduce the intensity of hailstorms. And both cyclones and hailstorms are becoming more intense just as floods are due to climate change and global warming. And so cloud seeding is a very important tool and it's very sad when people try and not cloud seeding. Having said that, it's very important to look to make sure that we're not causing any side effects. But having said that as well, essentially what we've been doing in the world over the past um, 50 or more years is putting more seeds into the atmosphere um, in the form of fossil fuels and other greenhouse gases that have been causing these kinds of intense weather events that we're worried about. And so, in a sense, there has been um, cloud seeding that's caused these events, but it's not the sort of cloud seeding we're talking about here. It's greenhouse gas emissions. Mm. And we've seen um, images of uh, huge devastation and damage done by uh, this, uh, uh, the rainfall and flooding in the UAE. And when we look at the infrastructure and buildings, Professor, it's designed to endure minimal rainfall, right? How should they now adapt and prepare ahead for these extreme climate events? Yes, it's very concerning. And, and I suppose Dubai is not alone. Um, the, the whole world's experiencing these extreme floods and they haven't prepared for such heavy rainfall. Um, I think in Singapore and also in China, there's a strong push towards what we call sponge cities. Um, and so sponge cities, um, instead of um, having impermeable surfaces such as they have in Dubai, which is a lot of concrete. So when it rains, the water has nowhere to go, so it causes a flood. Just imagine if all of that concrete was permeable and the water could go through the road and down into the water table. Um, and in Dubai's case, it's probably a lot of sand, so that would be quite helpful. Um, so sponge cities allow stormwater to drain away much more slowly and steadily, and they create permeable surfaces and structures to absorb the water so that it does not remain on the surface and cause a flood. Um, and so we're looking here at interventions such as permeable roads and paving, more trees, more wetlands, green roofs, um, and those kinds of interventions that make the surfaces much more permeable. Professor, to That's be fair, what though, need to be looking at. Understood. To be fair, though, Professor, even if the infrastructure was designed for heavy rainfall, is it fair to say that the the nature and the intensity of the the, the storms and the weather that we we just saw? Uh, would result in possible floods anyway in the UAE and Oman? It's possible. Um, you'd really have to design your sponge city to match the intensity and levels of rainfall that you expect with climate change. We're doing a lot of work on this at the moment in Australia. We're working with a lot of um, cities to look at what levels of rainfall they're expecting with climate change and what sorts of nature-based solutions combined with grey solutions we can put into those cities to reduce the chance of extreme flooding. So we may not be able to completely eliminate the flooding, but we may be able to reduce those peaks of flooding so you don't get the sorts of situations we're seeing in Dubai at the moment. All right, Professor, thank you very much for your input today. Rosalind Princely, Head of Disaster Solutions at the Australian National University Institute for Climate, Energy and Disaster Solutions.